Take it away. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for spending some time with us learning how to program your irrigation controllers. So we've got kind of a PowerPoint presentation, but then also to show you what's going on with an actual controller. I'll be dropping out of the PowerPoint from time to time and showing you what it looks like on an actual controller itself. So it's kind of awkward going a little bit back and forth, but I think it's going to help you see a little bit better uh, what's going on with uh, programming these controllers and what you're going to be seeing on the displays. So let's talk about programming these irrigation controllers. We've got some uh, formulas there underneath my little drawing that uh, are not in your handout. But don't worry about writing them down. You don't need to know the theory of relativity to program an irrigation controller. Same with the Pythagorean theorem and so on. Uh, the point I'm making here is these controllers aren't nearly as uh, challenging or difficult as many people think. I know people get a little flustered sometimes uh, looking at these boxes with dials and buttons on them. But honestly, tonight we're going to teach you how to program any irrigation controller. So even though you may have a different uh, brand or model than what we're showing you tonight, the same pieces of information go in. It might be just entered in a slightly different way, and we're going to talk about that as time goes on. So let's talk about what an irrigation controller actually does for you. It's going to turn the irrigation on and off at the scheduled intervals. So before we had irrigation controllers, we would have to actually go out and turn on the hose or open up our irrigation valve ourselves because we were the controller. And if you're watering every day, you remember the last time you watered. But if you're trying to only water your trees once every 14 days, if you're not marking it on a calendar somewhere or on your phone, by the time you get out to about day seven, you don't remember when the last time was you watered. You set the irrigation controller to water once every 14 days, and that's exactly what it's going to do. You can set these to water your yard, uh, with whatever type of irrigation system you have, through the evening hours. So especially if you have grass, you want to be watering those through the nighttime hours, starting at about midnight or so. Uh, those of you that are transplants from the Midwest, uh, it takes you a little time to get over that. But I promise you, if you're not overwatering, we're in the desert, we have very low humidity, you're not going to have any fungus or disease problems by watering at night here. And it's going to water the landscape without you even being there. It's just going to look at that uh, program and continue to run it. Which days to water, what time to start, which stations to run and for how long and so on. Now, these controllers do a lot of good things for us, but it's also important to remember what a controller does not do for you. It does not adjust itself for the seasonal water needs. Once you set a standard irrigation controller to run that program, whatever uh, watering days or intervals, um, that's what it's going to continue to do until you go out and change the program. There are new controllers out there. They're referred to as smart controllers, and that's exactly what they do. And there's an upcoming class, especially on those controllers, showing you kind of how they work and how to choose uh, one that works really well for our area. <clears throat> uh, irrigation controller on its own won't react to leaks or other problems in the irrigation system. And, Everybody's been driving down the road at one time or another and seen that broken sprinkler head just shooting water up in the air. And you wonder yourself, what are those landscapers doing? Well, they're not there on the day that it waters. They don't mow wet grass. So they don't, uh, they're not there when the sprinklers are running. Uh, large scale irrigation systems, there are flow sensing options available that would recognize the increased demand on water if there were a broken head or broken pipe and then it would shut it off, move to the next zone, and it would actually send a text message to the irrigation tech, letting them know which site, which controller, and which station had that problem. That saves water and it saves time. So your large scale systems, like what we use in our large parks, we utilize those. So it's a savings of water and it's a savings of time because the irrigation system is telling us, our irrigation specialists, where the problem is. The other thing a controller won't do for us is it won't shut itself off when it rains. So this picture is from outside my office at the town of Gilbert, and this was back in September of 2014. That was that once in a 1,000 year rain event where all the retention basins were full to the top and we actually flooded out parts of the freeway. So it doesn't often happen like that, but that was uh, quite the event that we had that year. So you can go out and you can set your controller to the off or uh, stop position, take it off of auto, um, but you do have to go back out and turn it back on, or you can install a rain sensor on there that will automatically recognize when it's rained and will stop the controller from running any uh, irrigation. So when it comes through to uh, selecting a controller for a job, 
uh, for your home. A lot of people will ask me when we're doing these classes in person, it's like, oh, does Rainbird make a good controller? Is Hunter a good controller? Well, all of those manufacturers make really, really good controllers, but they also make some controllers that may not be the best options for what we need here specific for our desert landscapes, especially with drip irrigation. So the first thing you think about is station capacity. How many zones or valves am I gonna hook up or do I need for my irrigation system? Station duration. This used to be a big problem. A lot of your low cost timers would only allow you a 30 or 60 minute maximum run time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you've got some plants out there on drip irrigation and I've got a shrub and I wanna give it six gallons of water and I have a two gallon per hour emitter on it, that means I need a three hour run time. So those controllers weren't really good for what we need for our drip irrigation system. So whatever controller you choose, make sure it has a good option for running long run times for those drip systems. Uh, think about the programs available, and this is where you're watering different stations at different intervals. It's like having multiple controllers in the same box. We're going to actually show you how to utilize those programs tonight. And start times. You want to have those extra start times in there to do what we call cycle and soak programming, particularly with your sprinkler systems if you do have any lawns out there. The sprinkler systems put down the water more than 10 times faster than our soil will absorb. So if you're trying to water it deeply by increasing the run time, the water's just gonna run off the surface over the sidewalk and down the street. I know we have uh, transportation issues here in the valley, but watering the streets does not make them grow. That just doesn't work that way. And we're gonna show you how to utilize those start times properly because unfortunately many people get confused with those start times and use them improperly. And of course, schedule length. This is not as big of a problem as it used to be, but many of your controllers in uh, years past would only allow you to select specific days of the week. So the furthest you could get out between waterings is only once every seven days by just selecting one day to actually water. Whereas with your desert adapted material, even in the middle of summer, you may only be watering your shrubs once every nine days. You may be only be watering your trees once every 15 to 17 days. Those controllers were just simply not good options for us. <clears throat> so when it comes to creating an irrigation program, it doesn't matter what brand, what model, what style controller you have, five easy pieces is all it takes. So all controllers think the same. There may be a little bit of difference as far as how you enter the information, but all controllers uh, do uh, need those five same pieces. Might be different ways of entering it. And don't worry if you don't have this exact controller at your home. We're going to teach you how a controller thinks. The logical steps it goes through before it actually sends out a signal to open up an irrigation valve to start watering your zone out there. So here, this particular controller we're using tonight, uh, we use it because we can uh, remove the panel and actually program it under battery power. So if we were in person, each one of you would have a controller in your hands right now. On this particular one, and I'm going to look off to the side here because I got to get my little annotate thing here. And let's do the pen. You've got a button down here that has three positions. So if it's over on the right hand side, it's in the run position. This is how you would turn this particular controller off if in case it rained. And when we want to change the watering schedule or set a program, we have it in the middle position. So let me go ahead and erase that. So I think if I do this, it goes away. No, nope, maybe not. There we go. Okay, now on this controller, once you uh, put it to wherever the settings are that you want to change, you're just adjusting it with the plus or minus buttons. Very, very simple. This controller is a three program controller. So up here you have a program selector switch. If you have a different controller like a Hunter uh, X Core or Pro C, you're gonna have a button on here that says program or PRG, and that's how you change between the three different programs. So any controller you got out there, they operate the same way. And uh, we're gonna go through those logical steps right now and show you how it works. And then we're gonna actually put in an irrigation program. So the first thing a controller needs to know, especially if it's just first been powered up, is what day is it today? When I first power up this controller right here, it thinks it's Sunday. So if I tell it I wanna water my grass on Monday and Thursday, it won't do it because it's not aware of what the current day is. So on this one, I'm in the set, uh, set program position. I'm not gonna drop out for this part, but it's really, really easy because we're gonna just go 
right to there where it says today. So I'm going to turn my dial over to where it says today. And yep, my controller still thinks it's Sunday. I'm going to look up the screen here and make sure I can see what you're seeing. So I'm just going to use my plus button and this is hard to do backwards. So now it says TH for Thursday. So now it knows it's actually Thursday today. The next thing the controller needs to know is what time is it now? So again, on these controllers, so the other thing I didn't mention is you can enter this information in any order you want. It doesn't matter. I'm just going through the logical steps you go through or the controller goes through before it sends out that signal to start watering things. So what I'm gonna do on this particular timer is I'm gonna put that dial right back up top to where it says current time. Now my controller, I put the battery in just a while ago and it thinks it's 111 in the AM. So I'm gonna use my minus button and hold it down. And when we do some of the other settings, I'm actually gonna drop out of the presentation at that point. And it is 6.15 PM and not. So I'm just using that plus button and that minus button until I get that display to say 6.15 PM. <clears throat> the next thing the controller needs to know is which days to run the irrigation. And this is the first real question the controller had asked itself, because the controller will ask, are you supposed, am I supposed to run something today or not? If the answer is no, it's done answering, asking questions. It doesn't need to ask anything more. So on this control, on this controller, what we're going to do is to go to the days to run. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. I apologize. There we go. On this controller, you've got the individual days over on that uh, left side of the dial there. And if you wanna go to a true interval schedule on this one, right underneath where it says uh, Saturday, it's got that little function there called skip days. Now, if you have one of those Hunter irrigation controllers, let me find my annotate button here. There we go. What you're gonna see on those different controllers, this just has a plus and minus. So you're just moving the dial around to where you want it to water. Whereas on your hunter controller, you're also going to have a right arrow button, oops, and a left arrow button. So on that controller, whatever's flashing on the display right there is what gets adjusted with your plus and minus buttons. So the next thing the controller needs to know is what time of day to start the irrigation. So now the controller says, okay, I know today I'm supposed to water something. And when we go back to that last screen, as far as uh, which days to water, it's asking this question for each individual program. Program A, are you a water day, yes or no? No, okay. Program B, are you a water day, yes or no? No, okay. Program C, are you a day I'm supposed to watering something? Then the next thing the controller needs to know is which time of day it's supposed to start that irrigation schedule. Very, very important on this. On this controller, you just have your start times down on the bottom, one, two, three. On some of your other controllers, you're gonna use those side arrow buttons to move between your start times, one, two, three, and some of them actually have four start times, which is even better. Important thing to know on the start times. The start times will start a cycle of irrigation stations that are in the program. Some people get confused. They think start time number one starts station one, start time two starts station number two, start time three starts station number three. That's not how it works. So let's say we've got three stations here. We want each one of them to run for 15 minutes and we want it to start this program at five o'clock in the morning. If you want one cycle of those three stations, <clears throat> you put in one start time. So what happens in this particular scenario is at 5 a.m., it runs station one for 15 minutes, it moves to station two, runs for 15 minutes, and then goes to three and runs for 15 minutes. But a very pro, uh, 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 a big programming error we see done out there, a very common one, that's the word I was looking for, is people think they need to put in a number two start time. Oh, it's not gonna do it with my annotate screen up. There we go. Ah. Release. There we go, okay. So people will think they need to put in a number two start time to start station two, 
And to make things worse, they will put in a number three start time thinking it's start station number three. So what happens in this particular scenario is at 5 a.m., it water station one for 15 minutes, station two for 15 minutes, and station three for 15 minutes. But then the controller says, wait a minute, I missed a start time. So it comes back and waters station one for another 15 minutes, station two for another 15 minutes, and station three for another 15 minutes. And then it says, oh, well, there's another start time in there. So now it comes back and waters one for 15 minutes, two for 15 minutes, and three for 15 minutes. So when you think you're watering individual stations for 15 minutes, really what you're doing is three cycles of 15 minutes of each station. That's 45 minutes for uh, each individual station that you're watering. Very common programming error you see. We do want you to use those extra start times to do that cycle and soak programming. And when we drop out and start doing some actual programming, we're gonna show you how that works. So when it comes to creating an irrigation program, the last thing the controller needs to know is which stations to run and for how long. And on this particular controller, you've got your individual zones over there. Once again, with the hunter, it's gonna say station run times, and then you're gonna cycle between the different run times with those left and arrow buttons. And when you get to the station you wanna change, that's when you use your plus and minus buttons. Same information, just a slightly different way to do it. Important thing about these uh, run times though, is only put the run times for the stations you want to run in that program. That's another pro, uh, common programming error we see, <clears throat> is where people will put information for a station in all three programs. And especially with this controller where it has that AB selector, ABC selector switch, people will say, well, I leave it in the A position for summer, and then in the winter I move it to the B position for uh, winter, all year round, that controller is running both of those programs. So we're gonna show you how to use those programs correctly. So an example of a program we're gonna look at is let's say we've got some grass out there. So we're gonna wander those uh, in the middle of summer about every three days. You can put them on a true cyclical schedule, but if you always mow your grass on the same day, sooner or later, it's gonna run that night before you wanna mow. And in the middle of summer, it's not that big of an issue. It should be dry enough to mow by morning, <clears throat> except for I'm showing a 5 a.m. start time here, which is actually wrong. We don't want to do that. Um, we want to water starting at about midnight or so. Uh, but in the cooler months, starting at 5 a.m., you want to go out there and mow, and that grass is going to be wet, and you just don't want to do it. So in this example, pardon me, looking at the other screen for a moment, And a big button. There we go. Okay. So on this one, we've actually picked out two days of working. There we go. So on this one, we picked out two specific days of the week. And it's true that you're going every three days and every four days when you do this. Um, but if you're applying the right amount of water uh, based on our uh, landscape watering by the numbers brochure, you're applying that full three quarters of an inch of water to your grass, you're going to be fine going that fourth day. As of right now, I have not watered my lawn in my backyard for 10 days. It's going into stress now, so tomorrow I'm actually going to water it. Actually, I'll probably water it tonight after the class. So like I said, we've got a 5 a.m. start time here. That's actually too late in the morning. By the time it gets done, then uh, by the time it gets done running in the summer hours, the sun is already up. You want to water through the middle of the night so you're not losing that water to evaporation. We want to water nice and deep. So station one is watering for 27 minutes. Station two is watering for 21 minutes. Notice three and four are zeroed out. Should let me advance the slides while I still have my notes up here. So on program B, we don't want to water our desert shrubs uh, two times a week in the middle of summer. Well-established desert shrubs, they don't need it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to water those desert shrubs once every nine days. Now, drip irrigation is not as big of a deal to run in the daytime hours. We still want to do it in the early morning hours so those plants have that moisture available in the root zone by the time the heat kicks on. But with drip irrigation, we're not throwing the water up into the air. So you're not losing as much to evaporation. So I'm not seeing a start time here. Where did my start time go? Oh, station time, sorry. <laughs> You'll notice station one and two are zeroed out. That's because we don't want our grass to water on Monday and Thursday and once every nine days. 
you'll see station three and station three has four hours of runtime on it. People get excited when they see those multiple hour run times. But if that's a one gallon per hour emitter that we have on those shrubs out there, when we run it for four hours, that's four gallons of water for each plant. And then number four is also zeroed out. Let's drop our little annotation things here. And desert trees, if you're fortunate enough that somebody designed your irrigation system correctly, your shrubs and trees are on separate irrigation valves or zones. Because your trees, you want to water deeper. What that means is you run it for a longer runtime. And when you're making this deposit of this water into the soil, you're, get, you're giving these plants a paycheck. And the tree gets a bigger paycheck than the shrubs. So that means he can go longer in between paydays. So on this particular one, excuse me, we're only watering those desert trees. And this is the middle of summer with established trees once every 15 days. And we are purposely using two start times. We'll cover that when we actually do the programming. Station one is zeroed out, station two is zeroed out, station three is zeroed out, station four and station four only has that three hours of runtime. So what that means is at 2 a.m. it's going to run station four for three hours and then at 8 p.m. it's going to run it again for another three hours for a total run of six hours. It's a nice deep run uh, for your trees and that's how you water very infrequently. So here we've got our imaginary uh, landscape and irrigation system. Uh, the lawn was a little too big. We couldn't run all the sprinkler heads at once. So we had to break it up into two separate valves or zones. Don't get hung up on the whether it's a valve station or zone. Uh, the, it's semantics to get into specific parts of the system. Don't worry about it. Use them interchangeably. So on this one, yeah, this is kind of hinky going back and forth to my annotate here. You will see we have a separate irrigation valve and lines that are watering just our shrubs. And then we have another irrigation valve with a separate line watering just our trees. So hopefully you're, hopefully you're fortunate enough to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to be playing a juggling act. So typically, we'll put our lawns in program A. You don't have to. You put, put them in whatever program you want. But it's kind of every landscaper in the world is always focused on the grass. So they always put the grass or the lawns in uh, program A. So in this case, we're going to be watering every three days or about two times a week. I say 5 a.m. start time here. Well, that's not really what we want to do. Now, station one is watering for 27 minutes, and station two is only watering for 21 minutes. This is the same piece of grass. It's in the same climate. It has the same soil. Why would I be running this station number one, which are these blue lines here with the sprinkler heads, six minutes longer than these purple ones here with those little sprinkler heads? What you might have found is if you've gone through the landscape watering by the numbers guide and done your tuna can test is maybe you've got better coverage. I did a better job of spacing and uh, laying out your sprinkler heads on that station one. So it's applying the water a little faster than that station or valve number two. We see that all the time. Your stations don't always put out the same amount of water. So now instead of 27 minutes, we're only watering that other station 21 minutes. Wow, we've saved six minutes of runtime. How much water is that? You'd be surprised how much water goes through your meter when you're running those sprinkler systems for your lawns out there. It's not uncommon for us to see them in Gilbert with our water efficiency checkups. Residential sprinkler systems, we will see them running at 16 or 18 gallons a minute. So to make the math easy, let's just say it's 10 gallons a minute. We've reduced the runtime by six minutes. Six times 10 is 60 gallons of water. Okay, that's about three showers worth if you're taking nice short showers. Not a lot of water. But we're doing it two times a week. That's 180 gallons times four weeks in a month. So that's, I can't do the math in my head. But just that little bit of adjustment on runtime on your uh, sprinkler systems at the end of the year makes a really, really big difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop out of the presentation so you can watch me program the controller. I'm going to do it the best I can. And because I'm kind of doing it backwards, I'm going to be looking over at my other screen to try and make sure that you're seeing what I want you to see. So let's do a stop share. Hey, there I go. I'm still, still seeing Daniela as the big uh, picture there. Um, I, am I filling up the main screen so people can see me, or am I just the little square up on top, which is what I'm seeing? Daniela? 
Um, I can see you, Jeff. It, you're a fairly big screen, yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure because on my view, I'm just a little thumbnail up top. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, so here we've got our controller. So remember, first thing we want to do is we want to program in days that we want it to run. So we're going to pick out specific days, and we always want it to run the night after we mow. So if I water, if I mow my grass on Sunday, see here, it's really hard for me to see it because I'm just a thumbnail. We don't want it to water Sunday night because that's the morning before I mow. So I'm going to turn that off. There we go. So that says off now. Now the very next day is Monday, so I want that to water. I'm going to move to Tuesday and turn that off. I'm going to move to Wednesday and turn that off. And then I'm going to move to Thursday. I'm going to leave that on because that's three days after the Monday. Then Friday. I'm going to turn that off and then Saturday, I'm going to turn that off. So now, no matter what we put in the A program for those stations, they only water on Monday and Thursday. The next thing we want to tell the controller is what time of day to start. Now I show 5 a.m. here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to on purpose show you how to do cycle and soak programming by using these extra start times down here. <clears throat> so you'll see. I wanted to water station number one for 27 minutes. I have three start times. 27 divided by three is nine minutes. So we're going to play that with our runtime. So let's go down to start time number one. That's interesting. Oh, I'm in the B program. That's why I've got problems here. <laughs> I just went through the wrong program. Sorry about that, folks. Let me fix this real quick. I had my program selector in the wrong position. So that's why we do things the way we do it. So a lot of times these controllers uh, will have a default program in there put in by the factory. They're set up to run every station for 10 minutes and uh, usually starting sometime in the morning. This one says 7 a.m. Well, we don't want to water this at 5 a.m. like I originally showed you on the screen. So we're going to start our first cycle of this at midnight. So I'm going to hold down my minus button here. And it starts scrolling pretty quickly. So my first start time is going to be midnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three short cycles, but only on Monday and Thursday to get that total of 27 minutes for station one and that total of 21 minutes for station two. So I'm purposely going to move to start time number two. And I'm going to make that say one o'clock a.m. So that gives it a good hour to soak in before I come back in with that second cycle. So there at 1 a.m. And be very careful on your timers. Pay attention to that a.m. and p.m. Some of these controllers have very, very small displays and it's hard to see the difference between a.m. and p.m. This time I'm going to move to start time number three on purpose and I'm going to make that say 2 o'clock a.m. Yep, too far, so we just use the minus button. So now we're at 2 o'clock a.m. for our third start time. So the last thing we need to know is which stations to run and for how long. So station number one, I want a full run of 27 minutes, but we're breaking it into three cycles. So you'll see there's that default 10 minutes that they put in the controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my minus button once. So now what happens on Monday and Thursday at midnight, it's going to start station one for nine minutes. And then at 2, 1 a.m. it's going to run for another nine minutes. And then at 2 a.m. it's going to run for another nine minutes, giving me the full 27 minutes I want. Now when we move to station number two, or 27 minutes we want it. We we're doing uh, nine minutes apiece. Now I move to station two, you'll see that default 10 minutes in there from the factory program. 21 minutes divided by three is seven. So we're going to move that down to seven. So now what's going to happen on Monday night, at uh, midnight, it's going to run station one for nine minutes and move to station two and run for seven minutes. Now, remember that default program in there because it puts it at 10 minutes for every single station. And station number three is a drip for our shrubs. We don't want our drip for our shrubs running three cycles of 10 minutes, two days a week. So we're going to use our minus button and make it say off. Same with station number four, it has that default 10 minutes in there. We're going to use the minus button and make that say off because those are our trees and we don't want to water those three cycles of 10 minutes, two days a week. Now, this is a six station controller, but on our example here, we only have four stations. 
So station five has a 10 minutes in there. It's not going to hurt anything because it's not actually connected to a valve, but I still like to zero those out. Don't confuse people, water conservation people come into your house to help you out and make a search all over looking for a play as irrigation station that doesn't exist. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my uh, runtime for station number six. <clears throat> so now we've done all five pieces. We set the current time. We set the current day. Program A is watering only Monday and Thursday. We have three start times, midnight, 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Station one is set for nine minutes. Station two is set for seven minutes. That's all five pieces of the program. Now, my background as a landscape contractor, um, when you get real comfortable with uh, programming these controllers, you'll see people, the dials spinning back and forth, the buttons are being pushed up and down, the program selector switch is moving up and down. You're going to make a mistake with your programming and you're either going to flood or fry your landscape. So what I like to do on these is I try to do one program at a time. And then when I'm done, the controller doesn't care anything about this. I turn my dial back up to current time. That's how I've reset my brain to say, okay, I'm done with program a. So let's go back into our PowerPoint presentation here for just a moment. And we're going to look at what we want to do with that B program. Go. For our shrubs. So here we've got that valve and then the lines running out with the various emitters out there watering just our shrubs. Now, in this case, I wish a toolbar was a little bit closer. We don't need to water our shrubs two days a week in the summertime if they're desert shrubs. We're going to start them at 6 a.m. and then we're going to run station number three for four hours. So this is where we're going to back back out. So one first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my program selector switch to the B position. Very, very important to do that. And then we're going to go in here. Now, remember, we're going to want to water these shrubs once every nine days, but there's only seven days in a week. So do we set it to water on Tuesday? And then before Tuesday happens again next week, go out there and reset it to water on Thursday? This is where you're going to use that interval or skip day function on your controller to make the controller count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It waters. So let me get out of this. First things first. I drop out of my presentation so you can see the controller. There I am. Okay, so first things first on this one, move your program selector switch to the B position. On those other controllers, you'll see in the display what program you're working on and be very careful about which one you see in there. That's where we start seeing those multiple programs out there where we've got the same program information, run day, start times, run, uh, run times um, in all three programs. It's the same thing as programming in three start times. So on this one, we're not going to worry about the days of the week. We're going to go right down to where it says skip days. Right now it says off and I'm going to use my plus button. Until it says once every nine days. So now there is no Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday in there. So now on this particular controller, if we go back to current day. Now, all of a sudden it's day nine. So on this particular controller, I believe it waters on the last day of the count. Many other controllers water on the first day of the count. Check your controller manual to see which it is. So if I know this hasn't run for a while and I want to make sure it runs tomorrow at that 6 a.m. start time, I'm going to hit my minus button once. So today is day eight. Tomorrow is day nine. That's going to make it water tomorrow morning. Okay. So the next thing the controller needs to know is which time to start, and we want to start at 6 a.m. So we're going to come back down here to start time number one. And notice it says off. That default program is always in the number one or a program. So I'm going to use my plus button until this says 6 o'clock a.m. There we go, 6 a.m. So notice this first start time set off where people often will look at that and say, well, wait a minute, where'd my midnight start time go? Your midnight start time is still in the A program. We're working in the B program. It's almost like another timer in the same box. 
So the last piece of the puzzle this controller needs to know is which station to run and for how long. And in this case, it's station or, uh, number three, and we want that to water for four hours. So I'm gonna use my my plus button here. And on this timer, after we get to 59 minutes, it goes in 10th of an hour increments. So you'll see this one says 4.0 and then HR over here. Some of your controllers being programmed in hourly runs, you'll see what looks like four o'clock. You'll see four colon zero zero. And you got to be careful with that because we had a resident in Gilbert. His water use went over 100,000 gallons and his lawn was underwater. And we went to his house and I opened the timer and I said, well, there's your problem. And he said, yeah, I'm watering for three minutes and 12 seconds because it said three colon one two. And I said, no, you're watering your grass for three hours and 12 minutes. So learn the syntax on your controller. So those are all the five pieces. We didn't mess with uh, current time. We didn't need to. We played with current day a little bit. But in the B program, only once every nine days, starting at 6 o'clock a.m., and then station number three for four hours. So when I turn my dial back up here to where it says current time, this is where people get confused. You look at their valve or station runtime for number one. Where'd that nine minutes go? It's in the A program. We don't want it in the B program because that's watering once every nine days. So the last thing we're going to do, we'll bring up that PowerPoint presentation again for just a moment and show you the C program. We'll drop back out to do the programming. There we go. So in this case, we're fortunate enough that we can water our trees for a longer run time to water them deeper which means we can water them less often than our shrubs. So we're gonna put these in the C program. And these we're only going to water once every 15 days. And this one we actually are going to have two start times. And notice here, I kind of wrote them backwards. I've got number one at 8 p.m. and number two at 2 a.m. Even if you program them backwards, it's still gonna pick it up. But now station four is gonna run for three hours once every nine days, starting at the 2 a.m. start. And then later on that next evening at 8 p.m., it's going to run for another three hours. Now, many people say, well, the drip irrigation that applies the water so slowly, we're not worried about runoff, so you don't do cycle and soak with drip irrigation. Well, the problem is, is most people don't have enough emitters for their trees, or if you want to run it for six hours all at once, what you may find is you're pushing that water way past the root zone. You're watering actually too deep at that point. So what we're doing here was we're purposely irrigating half of the desired water we want, letting it all settle in, and later back, later on coming back and hitting it with that second three-hour cycle. So that's going to do a couple things. Now we're irrigating that already pre-moistened soil. It's not going to push as deep down with what we call deep percolation, but it's also going to do a wonderful thing of underground because the soil is already moist and push that water further wider underground. That's why drip irrigation works so well with our clay soil, with that tight soil, capillary action will pull that water sideways as it's percolating down from your drip emitters. So let's go ahead and program the C program. There we go. So first things first on this one, I'm gonna move my program selector switch down to the C position. If you've got one of those other timers, like an Orbit or a Hunter, you're gonna hit the button that says program or PRG or whatever their uh, nomenclature is. So the first thing we're going to do is tell it how often to water, which is once every 15 days. Oops. So I'm going to come right down here to my skip day function, and I'm going to use my plus button. Oops. To go once every 15. Now, the original version of this controller, it was uh, gray instead of blue, would only go out to once every 15 days. This newer blue version will allow you to get out to once every 31 days, and that's the preferred controller you would want, one that can go out to once every 31 days. If you do have an old gray version of this particular one and you want to get out to that 31-day interval capability, this this little ribbon cable here and the little hinges. We just pop that right out of the box, go buy a new panel, pop it into your new box, and it works perfectly fine. You've just upgraded your controller by just simply popping in a new panel. So the next thing we need to know is our start time. So our number one start time, which is right here, we're gonna make that say two o'clock a.m. Come on.
cells there. Now we have something else going on in another program that has a 2 a.m. start time, don't we? In our A program for our lawns, we're doing three cycles, one at midnight, one at 2 a.m., or 1 a.m., and then one at 2 a.m. Most of your controllers are smart enough, so sooner or later, once every 15 days, we'll show up on a Monday or Thursday, which is what our A program is doing. Most of your controllers are smart enough to say if it's already running the A program, it'll say, I see you see program you want to start. I will do it as soon as I'm done running the A program. Some of your controllers, some of your lower cost ones, will just ignore that new program trying to start and you've lost your irrigation event. Some of your high-end controllers think you know what you're doing and you have the water ca capacity available that I can run a sprinkler station and a drip station at the same time and not lose my pressure. It'll be running your sprinklers and your drip at the same time. Just to make sure that's not gonna happen instead of a 2 a.m. start time, I do a little mental math in my head and I know that at 2.30, with that nine minute and seven minute run for my two uh, grass stations in the A program, this way, it's never going to overlap. So now I'm going to move to my number two start time down here. And here I'm going to use my minus button to get to the PMs. And we're going to make that say 8 o'clock PM. So 8 o'clock PM and 2.30 AM. Last thing we need for this complete program to water our trees is the run time. So we're going to come over here to station number four. And on this controller, I know to use my minus button to get those hourly increments real quick, and it moves in 10th of an hour increments. I'm going to make it say 3.0 HR for hour. If your controller programs the other way, it's going to look like 3 o'clock, 3 colon 0, 0. So I know I'm done with this program, so I'm going to turn my dial back up to current time, and I'm all good. So let's go back to our presentation here and look at our watering schedule. Okay, so here's our watering schedule. So now you noticed I fixed the A program with the proper start times. Let me get my little annotate thing here so we can draw on the screen. So we're still at Monday and Thursday, but what we're gonna do is at 12 a.m., we're gonna run for nine minutes and seven minutes. At 1 a.m., we're gonna run for another nine minutes and another seven minutes. And then at 2 a.m., we're going to run for nine minutes and another seven minutes. So here we're going to get that total desired 27 minute runtime and our total desired 21 minute runtime. That's how you use those start times for cycle and soak. Okay, for our B program, just like we showed you before, once every nine days, starting at six in the morning, station three and station three only is going to run for four hours. And our C program, which we did, I just did, once every 15 days, you'll see I fix that start time now for the first one to be at 2.30 in the morning. Station four is gonna run for three hours. And then at eight o'clock that following night, it's gonna run for another three hours for a total runtime of six hours. We just didn't wanna do six hours all at once because we may have pushed that water too deep. And by doing that cycle and soak, we've actually split that water and pushed it a little further sideways in the soil. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and shut the door on this controller and go inside and have a drink to celebrate a job well done. Well, on many of your controllers, not so, and especially on this one, remember that three position switch at the bottom on this one. So what we need to do on this one is make sure we put it back over to this side in the run or manual position. Many of your other controllers, instead of current time up top here, what it'll say is it'll say auto here, and maybe one click to the left, it'll say off. So if you want to turn it off when it rains, you're just going to turn your dial over here. And then when it's uh, time to start watering again, you'll turn it back to the auto position. I know the drawings uh, make it a little bit confusing. Yep, let's try that again. Let's not try to do everything all at once. So yeah, on many of your controllers, here is auto. Here is off. You turn it there when it rains, and then when it's time to start watering again, you turn the dial back here to where it says auto. On this particular one, it doesn't care where that dial is. As long as we move this position over here, 
It doesn't care if we're A, B, or C here. It runs all of those programs all year round. Every day it asks, program A, are you a run day, yes or no? Program B, are you a run day, yes or no? If it's at once every nine days and it's not a Monday or Thursday, program B is going to say, okay, it's 6 a.m. I'm going to run station number three, which is my shrubs, for four hours, and then I'm done. So there's a couple other things you can do with this controller. Number one is, is you may have just purchased your home and you don't know what water's what. I don't know what station one is. I don't know what station two is. On this particular button uh, controller, you've got this button over here for manual. So what you're gonna do is in the auto position, you're gonna turn your dial to whatever station you wanna run. You're gonna use your plus button to put some runtime in there and then you're gonna push your manual button. That's how you do a time manual run to either do your inspections in the daytime, you run your sprinklers in the middle of the night, don't get up with the flashlight at 2 a.m. to look at your sprinklers and make sure they're not broken or anything like that. Turn on the system in the daytime and look at it and see what it's doing. A lot of your other controllers, uh, you'll have a dial position on there that'll say, uh, uh, run all stations or run single stations, something like that. Now there's something else you can do with this controller. And uh, when it comes to fertilization, desert plants do not need to be fertilized. They've evolved over the eons to grow in soils that do not have lots of nitrogen or other organic matter. Grass on the other hand can do with a little bit of occasional fertilization way less than what the manufacturers tell you on the bag. They're telling you to fertilize that grass every month. More fertilizer means more water, which means more growth, which means more mowing. When more watering rinses out the nutrients from the soil, which means more fertilizing. Typically, I fertilize my grass in the spring and then maybe every two to three years, I'll do a different fertilizer in the fall to develop more root depth before my Bermuda grass goes into dormancy. I don't do a winter lawn, nothing against those who do, but I grew up in the Midwest. And when I moved to Arizona, if I'm not gonna shovel snow in the winter time, I'm sure not gonna make myself mow grass. The dog doesn't care if it's a dormant Bermuda lawn. So if we wanted to do a semi-auto cycle, you can do that on this control, actually you can do it on any controller. On this particular one, you just pick which program you want to run. And if I selected the B position there and then hit this button, what you would see is you'd see that station number three pop up here and it would run that station three for the four hours it's programmed in there. Your other controllers, you would just come over to that run all stations or whatever it would be, or do your individual stations one at a time. So that's pretty much the gist of it, how you program an irrigation controller. So it's just those five pieces when you first power it up, current time, current day, then by program, which days to run, what time to start, and then which stations to run and for how long. That's all there is to it. So uh, you guys did get the handout emailed to you. So there is a section in the back called, why is my controller acting so crazy? Uh, this comes from my time at Rainbow Tech Services where anyone in the country would call me up that was having problems with their uh, irrigation. And almost all of them started with the words, my timer doesn't work because 99% of the irrigation system is below ground, they associated everything with that sprinkler system for that box that's sitting on the wall. Many times it's actually something else going on in the system or a programming error. So those most common symptoms you're gonna see out there with uh, irrigation system problems are detailed in the handout and then uh, you'll know what to do about them. Cause that's the thing, irrigation systems know when Home Depot closes. So Friday night at 11 o'clock is when you hear the water gushing out there. So that should be helpful for you too. Um, I haven't looked at my calendar. We've become stupid since we started using smartphones. So, but I think we are doing the uh, uh, drip troubleshooting, uh, maintenance troubleshooting and repair, and then the sprinkler and bubbler troubleshooting and repair classes coming up here. Uh, so we'll actually be going through some of those symptoms and what to do about them. Lastly, you know, these, uh, watching these classes online is great. Uh, but I wish we could be in person. So hopefully we'll be doing that this next spring. Hopefully everything's going well and we're all allowed to see each other again uh, once again. Uh, but if you need more help, 
Uh, the technical service numbers, those toll free numbers for the different manufacturers are in the handout. And I can't remember if I uh, updated the handout to include the uh, web addresses uh, for the different manufacturers. But honestly, Rainbird is not that hard to find on the internet. Hunter, if you just type in hunter.com, it seems to be a financial services company. Whatever search engine is your preference, Bing, Yahoo, Google, whatever works for you, type in Hunter and Irrigation and you'll get to Hunter Industries. Eritro is eritrosystems.com. Now you may have a really old timer out there and their name used to be Hardy. It's the same company. So if you've got something that says Hardy that you need help with, call Eritrol or go to eritrosystems.com. Toro is very easy to find. So at all these websites, you can get all sorts of information and resources about your irrigation components. You can download the manual for your irrigation controller. So many people don't have that manual anymore or they just don't read it. Uh, the only problem with irrigation controller manuals is they're written by the manufacturers. So they're written with language that I understand completely because I've been doing this since 1983. What they really need to do is get a bunch of you people, teach you those five easy pieces on how a controller thinks and have you write a manual in plain, simple human language, not engineering irrigation tech language. And then everybody would actually understand what those manuals are saying. So with that being said, we're all set here and we actually ended up at right about the right time here. Do we have any questions? We do, Jeff. Uh, Linda wants to know what happens to the save program when the power goes out? Does the controller remember the settings? It depends. So on your older controllers, I'm going to drop out a lot of PowerPoint here real quick so I can show you this. Okay. So many of your controllers will utilize what is referred to as a backup battery. Typically, it's a 9-volt battery. So that way, if the power goes out, it's going to retain your program. Um, now, these batteries, you want to replace about every six months. The manufacturers tell you once a year, but they don't live in Arizona. So they don't understand what the heat does to these batteries. A lot of your newer model controllers have what's called non-volatile memory. And that means even if the power goes out, when it comes back on, your program is still intact. They still utilize those backup batteries, but that's only to keep the current time and day correct. So that way, if your power went out, and your backup battery was bad, your irrigation program would still be there if you had a controller that has that non-volatile memory. But instead of starting at 6 a.m. for your drip, depending on how long that power was out, it may not start until 9 o'clock a.m. If your power was out for X number of hours, because when the power comes back on, they think they're midnight if that battery's dead. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other questions currently. Okay. So I think Daniela can take over then. So yeah. we, got our, we got our last screen here that uh, says thank you to everybody. And go ahead, Daniela. Perfect. All right. Thank you first to Jeff. Great presentation and thank you everyone who attended today's class. Um, as you can see on the screen, if you do have more questions, you can certainly reach out to us here in Chandler or the town of Queen Creek. Um, and then as well as all the resources that Jeff has also provided to everyone. Um, as Jeff mentioned, we do have some more upcoming classes on irrigation. If you feel like your questions were answered today or you just can't get enough of irrigation, um, we have the DIY drip system troubleshooting class on Thursday, October 7th, and then the DIY sprinkler and bubbler troubleshooting on Thursday, October 21st. Um, and again, that information can be found the way you registered for this class, but as well as these websites that are listed on the screen. Um, we do have a short survey for you once you exit the WebEx, and we would appreciate it if you just took a minute of your time to fill that out and let us know how we did. Um, but other guys, otherwise, we thank everyone for um, attending tonight's class, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your week.